All right. I think I got this set up right. Uh, actually, I probably don't. Let me double check. I had to. Okay, that's not available. Let me go back down here. All right. Well, I'll have Facebook up. Uh, we'll see if we get any questions on that side. I'll just leave this up over here. Okay. So I did get a request, but um, we'll probably just. Um, there we go. I'm going to load up some reference real quick. Let's go ahead and close that preset and add some images here. Uh, streaming Mario World Kart reference. So they wanted to do some vehicles, everybody. Um, let's go ahead and say Kart Ref. And I don't really have a whole, all the reference kind of all over the place. There's all sorts of different Mario Karts that you can make. Um, oh, hey, Facebook's actually <laughs> working through my restream. Great. Alrighty. Um, so I may be doing some Mario Kart stuff, but, you know, feel free to ask any questions you want. I can cover whatever we want to cover. Not a huge deal. I'm just layering my reference around my screen here. And then we'll go ahead and save this preset using Quadro Reference Viewer, K U A D R O. Uh, okay, I think that'll work. All right, I'll save my thing here. Okay, so a lot of different ways you can go about making just about anything in ZBrush. And usually, um, what I'll do is I'll just try to get the basic shape out there. So if we are, um, hey, Video Nomad, thanks for showing up. Um, so even if it is a fairly complex shape, which none of these Mario Karts look like they are, but um, we'll go into Make Polymesh 3D here. We'll hit W and go ahead and scale this out. We can essentially just get the basic shape. Uh, if you're going to go through here and you're going to use like the clip brush to go through and be like, okay, it's a rounded shape, uh, but the ends are kind of sawed off. Um, <clears throat> that's okay, and you can kind of start with this shape. However, uh, if you do want to zero mesh this just to get a cleaner read on the type of shape that you're making, what I would suggest is first of all get the overall shape that you're doing. And if you wanted to bring in some reference and uh, reference images here, so let's go do let's do that. Let's go to texture import, and we'll go to we're going to be streaming and get some reference in here. Um, there's some side view reference. I'm just going to take this top down, top three quarter down reference here. So we're going to go ahead and grab this one. And I'm going to go into spotlight. We're going to make this dim down just a little bit here. I'm going to go into my movie and we're going to go to timeline and we're going to go ahead and say show the timeline. And then I can go ahead, I can turn perspective on as well. You can hit the P key for that. And I'm just going to make this uh, vaguely the right shape here and then I'm just going to tap in here. Uh, I don't even have to have this showing, but I have a feeling I'm going to be changing this quite a bit. So I'm going to leave that for now. And we're just going to get that overall shape. Um, but like I was mentioning before, I'll do Shift Z to get rid of that. Uh, but the whole reason I did that is I can, you know, go Shift Z, I can do whatever I want to to this, bring it back, and then just hit the use the arrow keys to snap it back. Hey everybody, good morning, thanks for showing up. I'm doing good. I thought, um, I thought my allergies were going to be worse this morning, and they're actually okay. So that's always a welcome, pleasant surprise. So, you know, making this overall shape here, um, you're just trying to get the big read. And again, if you use the clip curve, and I'm going to turn perspective off when I'm doing the rest of modeling. If you have perspective turned on, and you're trying to like, oh, I want to clip this, it's going to do that kind of thing. So turn perspective off while you're just doing your hard surface kind of stuff. Um, but if we use a clip curve, we don't have any access to like, this information. We can't put a polygroup there. Now you can actually put a polygroup there. You can hold on control shift, you can hit the space bar and you can say polygroup. And then you can actually give yourself a polygroup, but it's not a very clean cut. So in this instance, long story short, uh, you can use slice if you want to, and then I'll go ahead and just slice through the geometry and then you have a very clean cut. Uh, if you do, if you are trying to match some reference, sometimes it's easier um, to go through here and you can use the trim curve and you can it'll it'll basically slice uh, delete that geometry and then fill that hole. Now when it does a fill hole operation that's not mirrored, so I'm going to go to quick geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld, and we'll just go ahead and slice off the front and the back here. Bring our reference back, put this in here, and now uh, we can just kind of start uh, matching this reference here. Um, 
and we'll go ahead and turn perspective back on. And now I think I have a little better idea of how this thing needs to turn. You can also match your reference. Um, let's go ahead and hit X, go back to the middle here and reset that accidentally touched it. And then we can turn X back on, which is our X symmetry. Now, um, now that we have our basic shape here, uh, we can begin modeling this car in earnest. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can go about uh, making the shape. You can use project primitive. You may even have to, uh, you may find that you need to taper this front and this back a little bit more. Uh, it also might be easier if you hold down uh, control shift and isolate this front and the back. And then we do uh, geometry modified topology delete hidden. We have X turned on. So when you go to like zero mesh or depth size down to zero half, you can go ahead and start zero meshing this into something a little bit simpler, a little bit more easy to use like so. And you could even go through here and you can say, okay, let's go ahead and close this convex hole and you can just go ahead and cap these ends like so. And again, I like to have perspective off when I'm doing this type of thing. We can isolate these, hit control W, or you can isolate these end caps to polygroup auto groups, and now you got a front and a back. And like I was mentioning before, if you did need to taper this front and the back, you can try doing maybe a taper deformer. Uh, first, you have to turn X symmetry off. It'll go ahead and do that for you. So we have a taper deformer here. So you can kind of taper this end a little bit more if you need to, or you can kind of flare this end if you need to, so you can get overall control. Uh, another one that might be good is the deformer here. And there's more deformers in here. There's the deformer, and you can choose how soft and how hard the transitions are between the control points. So there's deformer hard, there's deformer soft. Probably we're just gonna do soft deformers. So we'll go ahead and say X symmetry mirrored, and then hold down control and alt, oops. And then, oh, I'm sorry, just control. And you can unmask these points here, for instance, and then you just have control over this point here. So if you need to flare this out, you can also add more resolution here. So you can go control alt, and then you can just kind of flare this out. And then you can kind of push this in or whatever you need to, to make that overall shape uh, work for you. Yeah, so, uh, and, and speaking of project primitive, uh, let's go ahead and go to subtool here. We'll go ahead and duplicate this off. And in order to get project primitive, um, kind of to play nice, not to play nice, but just to give yourself, uh, let's go ahead and turn X symmetry on. Uh, let's go ahead and hit X. I just want to re-center this here, and then we can turn X symmetry back on. <clears throat> so, and go in here and go to project primitive. And what that's going to do is just allow you to kind of push a primitive through here. So if you already know um, what the shape is that you're going to want to cut out through here, you can go through here and you can just uh, project a primitive through here. You can also change your primitives. Let's go ahead and switch this over to this side. For some reason, I like having my, I guess because I did the tutorials with this uh, over here. Um, but it doesn't really matter. So as long as you know what these things are, and you know here's your primitive type. So you can go to square and then cylinder. And then this one here is your uh, ring, but you don't really see it. So this is where if you want to see what you're doing and it, it's interacting with your object over here, you're going to want to go over here to your um, opacity, apply grouping. No, 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 no. It's actually been a little bit since I've used this. So a blending new surface. So we're going to take new surface and put that on one. And now we're just going to add a new surface here. So now we can see what we're doing. So you can modify uh, these primitives. And of course, you're going to have two modifiers here that's going to you know, do your radius here and then also make these sharper or more cylindrical. So you can very quickly kind of dial these type primitives in and then change your primitive types. Um, of course, there's a ton of different, let me go ahead and pull these up for you. Um, a better, more in-depth um, explanation of all of that. I'm going to go to my playlist here. And there's ZBrush 2018, what's new, right here. Or was that 4R8? That wasn't 4R8. Yeah, Project Pronos 2018. Uh, I can link you guys to this if it'll let me. And then um, that'll give you a better walkthrough. Here's the Project Primitive, shape, primitive Shapes 1 and 2, 3 and 4. Uh, all the Project primitive, primitive functionality in there. And you can dial in very soft, uh, very nice organic shapes uh, with that. <laughs> uh, hopefully those espressos uh, help keep, I, actually I need some espresso, uh, that would be great right now actually. Yeah, for any substance painter questions in a bit, I can do a little bit, I'm on Pixelogic's channel right now, I hope, there should be, if I'm not, I messed up, <laughs> but uh, I can do a little bit, uh, but usually when I'm on their channel I like to keep it 
ZBrush centric, but if it is ZBrush, um, you know, going from ZBrush to Painter, I don't mind. Um, when I open Z Modeler Brush, why does it put a polysphere in the shelf on a started file? Um, let's see. So let's go to Veta Bone here and let's just grab, I'm going to grab a PolyMesh 3D because it allows me to just very quickly go down here to initialize, hit Q cube, and then we can hit uh, X symmetry, and then we can start modeling. So uh, by default, it'll put that in there. And what that, uh, what you're doing with that one, with the Z Modeler Brush specifically, is you can hover over face here and you can hit your space bar. Um, you can go to insert nano mesh, polygroup all, and you can go ahead and just insert a nano mesh on your uh, object here. And by default, what it throws in here is just a poly um, cube. That's what that shape is. So uh, poly sphere with a, uh, that's cube shaped. So, and actually, now that I did that, let me, I'm gonna test something real quick. So we're gonna go over here to nano mesh. Um, let's go ahead and say inventory one to mesh here. Yeah, that's just a cube. There's nothing spherical about that. However, I guess if you really wanted to get down to it, you could say, um, let's go ahead and split mass points. Oh, I'm sorry, not split mass points, uh, split hidden, and then uh, control D. I mean, I guess technically you could see those as spheres. Hmm, well, a little bit misleading. So anyway, uh, long story short, uh, that's just essentially your nanomesh uh, insert object here. Uh, what's interesting about that is if you go in here and you say, okay, I want to insert a nanomesh on here and I can hit spacebar, insert nanomesh polygroup all, we go ahead and drag that out. It's like, ah, oh, I didn't want a cube. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can change this. Number one, you can hit the M key and you can grab anything you have in here. Even this thing we've been playing around with, you can grab that if you want to. And you can just pull that out. You can also switch it to any other one of these primitives that are sitting in here. It'll automatically make them uh, an animus brush. Alternatively, uh, if you wanted to go back to like, okay, here's the default cube. Actually, this isn't the default cube. These things are uh, have polarized caps, but you can always go in here and you can go into edit mesh, and then this will show you um, the mesh here. And then you can say, I want to change this. So you can go to brush, insert, grab anything here, and then we can hit W and you can just swap these shapes out here and then go out of edit mesh. And now you've swapped this mesh out course, that's kind of a roundabout way. Um, another way you might find easier is if you have any insert mesh brush, you can go over here to brush, create, and then uh, create nano mesh brush. And then if you hit the B key, you're going to see it's going to give you a new Z modeler brush. And then when you hover over a face, it's going to say insert nano mesh. It's already set up for you. These are all your different nano meshes you can set up. And then you can insert a nano mesh on polygroup all. And then you can say, okay, this one. No, I don't want that one. So you can choose another one. And there you go. But at any point, you can go in here to your nano mesh, and now we have two indices. This is our first indi index, and then this is our second one. Uh, you can always go back in here to edit mesh, and you can swap these out, um, or you can swap them out, or while you're in here, you can say, let's do an ins, ooh, um, poly group, poly loop, and we'll tap alt, and then we'll go to inset poly group ball, we'll drop this in, and then we'll say Q mesh poly group ball, we'll push this in. So we can modify these things, then go out of edit mesh, and then those will be updated on the fly. And of course, nano meshes are just um, instances that are applied to <clears throat> your face topology, and there's a lot of different, you can go fit, fill, let's try this up to a one. A lot of different really cool things you can do with nano mesh. Uh, and, if, and I'm assuming that's what you're, as far as like, oh, my Z modeler brush, so we'll go around the Z modeler brush. You're talking about this shelf up here, not like uh, your tool um, sub palette or something like that. Cool. Uh, I was trying to do a sci-fi armor piece for my character on the forearm, like the ones you have in your Halo 2 anniversary piece, but I'm having problems on adapting the shape to the body since uh, when I try to use any kind of bendiformer, I get a weird result. Hmm. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Let me see if I can go check that out. So, uh, oh, new Mars challenge. Uh, okay, uh, manage, nope, don't want to manage my portfolio. I want to just look at my profile. So, art station. And then we have Halo 2 anniversary stuff. And so like this forearm piece right here. And if you scroll down, and this isn't for you necessarily, I'm just, uh, just showing it to everybody. Um, this is my blobby blockout sculpt, just trying to get my uh, pieces in the right area. 
just to kind of match the concept here and then eventually it gets matched and then you go through and you can rebuild it and you can refine it uh, in all sorts of different ways. So essentially this is where I would end up before I would be like, okay, let's break this problem down into smaller problems. And then eventually you get it all cleaned up and rendered out and uh, that's the final overall shape there. So, um, then the shape of the body since when I use any kind of bend deformer, I get a weird result. Now the bend deformer, well, the bend deformer can kind of sometimes be uh, very resource intensive here. So if I go grab the comma key, you guys won't have this tool. This is a special tool I use for streaming that makes it so that I don't get flagged for inappropriate content. Uh, but this is the Nick Z mesh here. And what you guys will have to do is go into your layers and say bake all and then delete any of the other subtools out of here that you need. Um, <clears throat> but if I wanted to put like a forearm piece on here, uh, a lot of different ways you can go about that. Uh, one thing I would like to do is like maybe duplicate this and go, okay, uh, we can hit control W and hold on control shift. And we were talking about slice earlier. So we can go through here and we can say maybe slice this forearm piece here and then we can isolate it and we can say delete hidden and even here we can say okay you know what let's zero mesh same and just get um, zero mesh size on zero go delete hidden zero mesher same that size on zero zero mesh it turn x symmetry off that would help there we go uh, so now you have new geometry so if you if it was a simple like piece like oh it's going to be something like this and we can say um, you can go through here. You know what? I can even hold down Alt and just paint. It's like, I don't need any of this stuff here. And we can hold down Alt and get rid of these pieces here. Or if I decide, you know what? I want a little piece to come in here. I can hold down Alt, start painting this, tap Shift, and that'll, oh, I lied. Let's take this one, hit Control W. Now I got two separate poly groups here. So I can hold down Alt, start painting this one, tap Shift, to inherit it, and then I can just go through here and we can add that poly group back. If I change my mind, I'm like, oh, I want this purple one. Uh, I can start holding down Alt tap shift and then paint over these ones here and we can even carry that out so it's like okay I want this I want this piece to vaguely look like this piece you can hold that control shift isolate this geometry modify topology delete hidden and then you can go through here q mesh polygon ball and then you can start modeling your overall shape if this is the be all end all shape you're going for uh, if you want to experiment a little bit more and I generally do you can skip all that and uh, we can cap this nicely or we can just geometry modify topology close holes here and then uh, let's go ahead and just do our, in our geometry crease menu do a crease PG and then we can hit control D control D not a dynamic preview because what I'm going to do now is just go in here to our uh, we'll just go straight into uh, Dynamesh here actually uh, that's already applied let's go ahead and crank up that resolution quite a bit and then we'll go into Dynamesh here and now we can start figuring out like let's turn up perspective as well um, now we'll turn on our body and then we can go through here and we can go say, okay, look at me in a little inflate here. And let me go through here and we can grab our clip curve. And we can clip these things back. Um, or I can hold down control, alt, and we can like scale these things and go through here. And we can start uh, going to our standard brush. Let's crank up our intensity and let's uh, crank our lazy radius up and then hit L to turn it off. So if I have, if I need my lazy radius, I can always uh, turn it back in. Uh, but anyway, uh, so if you did want to, you know, go in here with your clay buildup, let's drop that intensity down just a bit. So you can go through here and you can start blocking out your overall shape here. You can like mask where you want to kind of maybe put a little shape in here and then tap alt and then hit W and then we can hit, uh, we can maybe pull this out a little bit and we can maybe squeeze it in a little bit and then hold down alt and I'm going to rotate this thing around. Um, and then we're, again, we're just looking for overall shape. We can pull this out a little bit and then we can redyne the mesh and then go in here with our Damien standard and maybe start making some decisions on if I want to go through here. You can also hold down alt with your Damien standard and you can like maybe start pulling up a ridge on this side here. Uh, you can also skip all this. If you're really comfortable with Z-Modeler, you can just go through and start, start box modeling these shapes if you know exactly what you're making. Uh, but if you are just exploring, a lot of times what I'll do is just kind of start like this. Um, now you're going to see I'm using the Move Accu brush. So the Move brush, and I talk about this every stream, over here in your curve area here, you see my Move brush doesn't have Accu Curve turned on. And if I want to pull this out to a corner, um, 
it'll kind of do it, but this is better for like soft transitions. So if I want this to be round, I'll just go ahead and use that for a nice round transition. However, if I want to pull these out to corners, you can turn this accu curve on, or I have a brush already set up with that on. I can just use it my hotkey, and I can just pull these things out the corners here a little bit better. Um, this gives you a little more control on uh, that type of thing. Now, if you really want to go through and really refine this into a tight corner, let's go into solo mode here. We're going to go into our H polish brush, and you can just use H polish. You can hold down Alt. You can go through here, and you can just H polish this. Now, again, this isn't box modeling. You're just trying to get your ideas out so that you can rebuild this uh, or break this down into simpler forms, and kind of just get um, get it worked out that way. You can also go through here if it's going to be a very um, regular shape along the top here. Again, we can use it move accu to kind of pull this out here. You can use H polish to just kind of bring all of this out like so. And then you can go to the side here and you can hold on control shift and clip and you can go like, you know what, I want to clip this back in here. And you can just kind of get that shape here. And then just continue to refine this however you'd like. Uh, and then at that point you would decide how you'd want to rebuild this overall shape. And we'll go ahead and pull this out like so. Um, now, as far as like using your deformers here, you're going to want to make sure, hold down Alt, and I'm going to put this kind of in the middle of my mesh here. You can also just click this little go to unmash mesh center. And you know, if you have, if you want to go to the middle of this part here, you can say go to unmash mesh center and then go to the middle of that part. If everything's unmasked, it'll go to the middle. Um, now, because it's at an odd angle, I'm going to have to go through here. I'm going to hold down Alt, and I'm going to match it. So this may be the weird result it was giving you. Um, then you can go in here and you can say like bend arc, and then you can like, um, use these things <clears throat> to kind of match your overall shape. Um, but of course, since we started with this shape, uh, it's already going to match it. But um, using bend curve, ooh, I hope it works okay. 8,000 points, it should. Um, bend curve, I like to only use with very, very primitive um, geometry. So I would, I would be weary of using it on something high, as high as this possibly, because it might slow my machine down quite a bit. Hmm. John uses uh, Nanomesh, how do you offset one row? Like for chain mail, I saw you do it once. Um, yeah, you, you would do, uh, one way to do that would be the nano mesh indices. So I would, uh, like if you're doing a bug's eyeball. <clears throat> Let's go into, before we go to make polymesh 3, to go to initialize here, H divide and B divide, we'll do like 16 and 16. And then we'll go to make polymesh 3D. Then in our Z modeler brush, uh, we have a cube by default. Um, that's fine, but let's go ahead and make another one here. So I'm going to go through here, grab our simple brush here. I'm going to make this even simpler. So I'm going to grab this one, go to initialize, and we'll do Q sphere. That's a good one. So with that sitting out there, I, I mean, I can make a brush out of this. We can go to B, create insert mesh new, and then once you have that insert mesh created, you can say insert nano, create nano mesh brush, or you can just go to your regular nano mesh brush and do all the things we did earlier in the broadcast. But uh, going back to our bug eye here, essentially, uh, one thing you can do, you can do polygroup, poly loop here, and we'll go ahead and say every other one can be this color, whoops, and then you can go insert nano mesh, and again, since we have the cube back, since I, I didn't use my one I created, I'm using this one, all we got to do is hit M, and then we'll grab that poly mesh here to swap that out, uh, insert nano mesh poly group all. And uh, in fact, let's do, let's go ahead and squash this down. I'm going to go ahead and squash this in one direction. And what might make this easier is if I do capture it from this direction, I can go to create insert mesh new. And then one of the advantages of taking that insert mesh brush and then saying um, create nano mesh brushes, I think it'll inherit that. So if I go through here <clears throat> and I use this one and I pull it out, it'll actually already fit. Uh, or be drawn out at that angle. I won't have to go through my nanomesh properties and rotate it. So we're going to hover over this, insert nanomesh polygroup call. We're going to pull these out. And then over here, we'll, we can just insert nanomesh polygroup all here. And if we, well, first, before we do that, uh, you can go ahead and set these index zero properties up. So you can say, you know what, I want this to be a size of one and I want it to fit perfectly within here, or I just want it to, um, you know, proportionally fit it so it doesn't change its shape, but I want it to kind of just dial in here. There's a little bit of rotation on here. I'm going to say zero that out. Um, yeah, let's say we, we think that'll work fine. Maybe we want to offset it a little bit. So let's try that Y offset. Nope. 
let's try that X offset. Nope, Z offset. That makes more sense. Okay, so we can kind of pull it out away from that surface just a little bit. Uh, if we like these properties, when we go in here and we kind of dial these ones in and they're all askew, you can go index zero, copy, index one, paste, they'll match up. And then on this one here, uh, you can go through and you can offset these. Um, you can also, if you want a little bit more control, because sometimes these offsets can get weird, you can go down here to alignment and say align to normal. And then um, uh, it's going to be a local. Uh, so the offset might behave a little bit more. Uh, eh, yeah, you're going to have to go through here. It's a little bit weird. So what might be even easier is um, when you have these things on there, uh, let's go ahead and say, let's go back here, index one, copy, index zero, one, paste. So we can actually isolate. Uh, let's go here, control shift. Let's switch this over to select rectangle. Um, let's go ahead and turn off our nano mesh temporarily. I'm going to grab these ones here and we're going to do a split hidden. So when we turn nano mesh on, we now have nano mesh here and we have nano mesh here. And then for any of these, it, this is all centered. So we can just go ahead and just manually rotate this and you can have just hold on shift and say how exactly how many degrees you want. And then you can offset those That's two separate subtools. But ideally you would get nano mesh to, um, offset and just kind of wrap around the mesh. But if you can't get it, then that's maybe one way to do it. <clears throat> uh, why your UI keeps losing half of what you put on it. So here's my custom UI and uh, it's got everything in there. However, you're going to notice that the Z sphere menu is empty, uh, but all this is, is working pretty good. However, if I go in here and I grab a Z sphere, and drag it out and we're going to go edit the z-sphere so we're going to go in here and we're just going to start making this little z-sphere creation so you're going to see when i go to my uh, uh, menu a lot of that stuff is grayed out and i can't really use it a lot but my z-sphere menu is full so it's uh, your custom menu is going to be context sensitive uh, for example if i have a polymesh 3d in here <clears throat> i can mirror and weld however you can't really mirror and weld on a it's I don't even think it's available to you. It's like it's disappeared because Z spheres don't have a geometry modified topology menu at all. So anything with the Z sphere selected, um, there is no modify modified topology. So it's not going to be available in your custom menu. However, if you choose a poly mesh, all that stuff will come back. So it's context sensitive. Depending on what you're working on, you may or may not have access to everything you would normally do. Yes, like what Dougie says. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Uh, how would you refine the armor pieces for the final result? Uh, it's kind of just, it, you know, like I said, it's um, the breaking it down into easier problems to solve. Uh, this is kind of a gross piece of geometry here. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we can kind of pull this in here and let's say, you know what, let's decide, uh, I want this. Oh, that's another thing we're talking about too. And let's, you know, as if you need more resolution, you can always go in theory and add more resolution. Uh, and like I was saying before, you can hold down alt and you can be like, okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to hold down alt with my Damien standard brush. We can pull this out to a corner and then go back in with my clay brush and we can kind of fill these little spots in here. And then you can go back in with your H polish brush or your trim dynamic, whatever you want to do. And this will kind of be that overall shape that I'm going for. Um, now to make this shape where it's like curved up here and then it kind of goes flat on this side. Um, if it's an easy enough shape, I may just go in here. So I have a custom, you can go BI brush insert and you go to insert primitives. I have a custom uh, little brush in here that just has like, oh, a cube. So I can just do a very easy, simple cube in here and I can go through here and then we can split mass points. And now I'm simply, um, choo because I have my 3D concept sitting in there, I can go through here, we can turn on transparency, and we can just start box modeling this uh, using Z modeler here, if that's if that's easier for you. Uh, and sometimes it is, so you can go through here and you can say, okay, we've got this basic shape in here, I'm gonna go through here and we're gonna insert multiple edge loops, I'm just gonna drop an edge loop down the middle, and then we'll go in here and like bevel, edge loop complete, and we'll pull this to the side. And now I'm gonna take these two edges here, we can say mask edge here and here, and then invert that, and then we can pull these down a little bit. And then on the side here, we can say, you know what, let's do insert a uh, single edge loop. And we'll put an edge loop right in here to just to control that. And then through here, we can alt 
uh, if you turn on ghost, you can actually go through your mesh here, and then we can say Q mesh poly group ball, we can pull these forward. And then we can go ahead and rotate this whole thing around. Um, and when we were talking about, you know, getting a slight bend to this, you can go through here and you can say, let's do an insert multiple edge loops. You can kind of just add some geometry in here, add some geometry in here. And now this one would probably be fine. Number one, we were talking about bend arc. So you can just go through here and you can use this to kind of bend it or you can use your deformer. This one I would feel comfortable going in here <clears throat> with bend curve. We can go ahead and change this um, axis so it goes down my object here. And again, because this gizmo is aligned to that object, it'll just go down this axis and we can change the curve resolution. And now you have access to kind of go through here and you can kind of go nail this in. And then you take this one even and you can do a twist, which we don't want to do, but we maybe want to do a scale, you know, that kind of thing. And maybe we want to go down here and we want to scale this. Um, you can squeeze it or you can scale it inwards or something like that. Um, and, you know, if you want to put this uh, line back here, uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. Uh, you could collapse these edges here. So you can go through here and you can say collapse edge, but you're going to end up with some triangles here. Um, but that's one way to get that shape. You could also, just like we did before, you can try, you know, slide's always a good one, but since we have that extra geometry through here, I'm just going to go through here really quickly and just say mask edge, boop, beep, boop, invert that, and then hit W, and we can just pull this back here, um, like so. And then now you're just kind of box modeling shape and uh, making, oh, yeah, we need to, maybe slide isn't the best, uh, best one for that because we'd have to go through here we can see maybe slide this edge here maybe collapse is a little bit of a better option slide this here so we're going maintaining that and then this one we can say mask a uh, single poly here invert that and just pull that straight back and then if we want to reset that we can just hold down alt and just put that right on there and then just pull it back and that's actually a little more of an interesting shape um, for these edges over here you could maybe do like we were talking about before you can mask these edges right through here and masking is really just a way to instead of selecting an edge like you would in uh, my or max or whatever you can just go to unmesh mesh center we can reset this and then we can just uh, actually we can set it here go to unmesh mesh center and then we can just scale these in like so um, but again this is just a box modeling method if you wanted to go another route we could take this overall shape here and it's like oh, you know what it's a little bit complex and I don't want to really think too hard uh, it's easy enough just to go in here and we can go to like a pen to z-sphere and then we'll just make sure we're just looking at these uh, two objects here we're going to go out of solo mode and go out of transparency mode so we can see all this stuff I'm going to hit E we're going to scale this down a little bit and you don't have to do this just something I like to do we'll hit W and we'll just throw this into this object here and we'll just continue to scale it down just so it's out of the way and then transparency off um, and again I have my z-sphere menu down here so uh, you know what, since I'm not going to be polymodeling, I'll go ahead and collapse that. So I'm going to edit topology, dynamesh, resolution down to zero, density down to one. And now I'm going to change matcap pearl, go to a darker color, and then just go into Q. And now we can just simply rebuild the shape really quickly. One, two, three. And then we'll go down here. And then we can go across and then down. And again, what we're essentially looking for is just a nice shape that's uh, like a low res envelope that we can control a little bit easier here. And we can just go right down the middle here. And then we can go from side to side, here to here. And it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. And we can always hit W to go back in here and we can you know, rearrange some of these points here. And if this was symmetrical, you could for sure just go through there and symmetrically um, do what you needed. And we'll go around this shape here. And now if you did have a bunch of alpha detail on here, um, you could probably skip that and that could be something you could live Boolean in later. It kind of depends on just how you want to tackle um, these shapes. And I'm getting kind of a weird shape going on in here. So use your best judgment when you're rebuilding these things. Um, but you can just get in here really quickly and just kind of go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like so, and this, this is the, the that softer fall off I was looking for here. So we can go, you know what? I like that soft fall off. This isn't really helping me. So I'm going to hold down Alt and delete it. And then we can just rearrange some of these points in here. There we go. And then now, yeah, this isn't really helping me here. So we'll go ahead through here. Um, now when I'm doing this, I am going to want to keep track of where this creasing is happening. And that's just where I'm going to like keep this object in here, we can just terminate these through here, that's fine. Uh, and I can always go ahead and cap that bottom as well, it's not a big deal. 
and you can either cap it with this geometry that you're using right now or you can just do it later with ZModeler. Uh, but then once you have this shape here and then here and then here, 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 here. So we got the overall shape. Uh, we can go ahead and there's n-gons in there but um, <clears throat> it'll probably resolve some of those n-gons if you'd A for adaptive skin. And this that stuff I was changing earlier is just down here. So dynamesh resolution down to zero. We don't want to dynamesh this. Density down to one so we see exactly one for one the polygons we're making. Uh, so it was making okay decisions but I think we can do a little bit better. So I'm just going to go through here. We're going to click right down the middle here and we can just terminate these things here. And then another one right down the middle here. And again we're just looking for that low res envelope. So we can go through here and we'll just make the shape here and then uh, I think that's okay so we'll hit A okay there's our overall shape actually that bugs me on the side let's change that Ugh. all right well always forget when I'm streaming turn off the uh, the quick saves I'll show you how to do that luckily we didn't lose anything we just gotta restart ZBrush oh it gives me a chance to stretch get a drink of water Thank you, ZBrush. And then um, over here in my quick saves, we have a recovered Z tool. We can just load that back up, and we're right back where we started. So we'll open this up. Yeah, we got our Z sphere here, and then um, let's go ahead and choose to close this off. Uh, you're going to see edit topology is still on. We can turn that off and on, and then that I think will give us uh, put us in a um, better. Oh, also um, it'll go ahead and turn off perspective for you as well. Now what I was going to fix is this whole thing over here. So I'm going to hit go into Q for drawing and I'm going to just go through here and we'll just go ahead and just uh, maybe terminate this here. That'll give that uh, that side over there a little bit uh, easier transition. So we can hit A and there we go. There is the geometry I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead through go through here and say make adaptive skin but of course that's going to be in your adaptive skin menu here. Uh, let's go in here to append, not duplicate, delete that. Uh, so we have our Z-Sphere sitting there, uh, but if we append this skin Z-Sphere, now one thing you want to be careful of is while you're in the Z-Sphere here, you can go through here and say, I want to Q-Mesh this out, and I want to do all sorts of crazy stuff, and I want to model on this thing. And then you're going to go, oh, let's mirror and weld it. And you're going to go down here to Geometry, and there's no modified topology, there's no mirror and weld, because what you're doing is you're messing around with this preview. If I hit A, um, it'll try and snap out of that preview, <laughs> and whew, that put me in a bad state. Um, so you can sculpt on that preview, you can model on that preview. Uh, I think I made some non-manifold topology when I did that um, Q-Mesh, which is why it did that. Um, but the good news is, um, let's go to grab the Z-Tool here. Hopefully that didn't put me in a irrecoverable state. Okay, it didn't, it just disappeared. So um, here, let's go out of here real quick and then we'll again, Go through here, just bear with me. And top all you on. And then we'll go in here to Mega Pearl here. Here, boop, beep, boop. And again, this is all normally stuff I wouldn't do, but since I'm explaining things, um, and if I want to get rid of just one, I can put a little line down the middle of it. And then uh, I'm tapping off here, and we're just going to go ahead and create that thing. There we go. So again, um, Make adaptive skin. Uh, so instead of messing around with the Z sphere here, you're going to append that geometry here. The Z sphere, if it confuses you, you can, but you can always use it to go back to. But we can just go ahead and delete that. And then now we just have the geometry here. Uh, if you did want to go back to your Z sphere, you can. Uh, if we want to say like append a Z sphere here, you can go into your Z sphere here and under your uh, topology, you can say select topology, and you can select anything out of your menu in here that you want to uh, put the topology into. But we don't need to do that. So we've got our geometry here. Now one thing you want to check is if I go through here and I start inflating it just to get our um, our volume back, uh, if you notice, I'm just going to do this really quickly. Let's go back to polymodel here. Um, let's do this. So if I do it here and I go through and I try to inflate this and it's like, hey, I'm inflating, but it's like shrinking. Let's go into solo mode so you can see that a little bit better. You're going to see it's doing this instead of inflating. Make sure you go down here to display properties and you say uh, turn double off. By default, when you make an adaptive skin, it turns double on. You're going to want to turn double off so you can see which way your normals are facing. So when you go through here and you're doing stuff like a deformation inflate, your geometry is behaving normally. So this is the shape we get. 
Um, like I mentioned before, I am going to turn double on temporarily so we can go through here and we can cap this. Uh, if you want to, you can just go through here and you can say close holes and it'll cap it for you. And uh, you know, it may not be the nicest topology, but you can go through here and you can say like delete edge. You can go through here and you can kind of clean this up a little bit and you'd be surprised it sometimes gives you fairly okay geometry as far as, you know, stuff that you can go through and fix. Now this little piece over here, you can go through here and you can, um, we can say spin this edge and then we can uh, spin that over here. We can continue spinning this around just to get a little bit more desirable result here. And, uh, or you can just manually go through and you can like bridge your edges here, uh, which may be easier in this case. We can hold down alt. We can go through here. We can say delete polygroup all. We can delete this polygroup here. And then we can go through here, we can hover over this edge, and I'm gonna use my mouse for this. And we can say, bridge edges. We're gonna bridge this edge to this edge, this edge to this edge. And then through here, we're gonna to go to insert multiple edge loop. We're just gonna put an edge loop right down the middle here. And then these two points here, we can say, uh, stitch two points. We're gonna stitch this point to this point, and then this point to this point. Or if it's hard to do that, you can also say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bridge this edge to this edge, and this edge to this edge, and then you can say collapse edge, and you can just go collapse it all in. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and take all of these polygons down here, and we'll make them all one polygroup, just control W. And all I like to do is Q mesh polygroup all. I'm just gonna give us a little breather uh, down here. And uh, this is one instance where uh, I, can, I can modify this. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and say split this edge right here, and then we're going to do, uh, you can do, let's do this, let's do bridge two points here to here, and then I'm gonna say collapse this edge. There we go. So we can kind of terminate that. So uh, going back to our, let's go back to Matcap Gray here. This is our concept sketch, so we can do Shift S, and then Shift S, and then Shift S. I'm just trying to get an overall view of what this thing's gonna look like at the end, and then I can go back to our model here, and one easy way to get some creasing going is you can, you know, crease by polygroup, but under geometry crease, you can go down here and say crease tolerance. Then you can hit D for your dynamic subdivisions here. And you can keep dropping that crease tolerance down until it kind of creases what you want. And then you can go back through with your zoom modeler brush over this. We could say like crease edge, hold on alt. And we can uncrease these edges. So you can kind of go through here, be like, hey, this is a soft fall off here. This is a hard edge here on the side. This side is flat, uh, but this side should be pointed. So we're going to go through here and we say crease this edge. We'll go ahead and crease all the way through, harden that edge up. And then on this side here, we can go ahead and crease these two just to get that overall shape. And then over here, this is all soft. So we're going to go ahead and uncrease these edges here like so. So this is our shape. So we go out of here and uh, we'll turn off solo mode. And it's like, okay, you know what? We actually do need to inflate this a little bit. So I'm gonna say inflate, we can type in like one, just to get our volumes back. Or you can go through here and you can say Q mesh polygroup all, and then you can just hold down shift and just pull along those surface normals. So another thing is um, these things are really crispy. So when we go through here and we say smooth so div of like four, it's like, okay, I'm smooth, but boy, those are like razor sharp edges. So what I'm gonna do, Say so drop our crease level to three, and then we'll do shift D to turn off dynamic, and then D to turn it back on, and then you get a little of a softer fall off. Then you might notice, oops, I need to uncrease this. So we'll go ahead and crease, and uncrease those. So there's my overall shape. And if you want to do anything crazy, um, or add some detailing in here, uh, you can go through here and you can be like, okay, let's do a um, polygroup poly loop, and then we'll do shift D to turn that off temporarily, and then let's say we want to do an inset maybe, inset polygroup ball. And let's do a region to kind of inset these things. And then through here, we can maybe do like a Q mesh uh, single poly here. And you can just like Q mesh this back. And then we can go and again, uh, running the crease at this point isn't going to help. So I'm going to, I mean, I don't want to lose all the uncreasing that I did. So I'm going to drop this crease tolerance pretty far up just to kind of grab these new creases in here. And when you hit D, uh, we can actually go through here and we can say crease outer targets. Uh, poly, a uh, single poly, outer targets, I think that'll work. Yeah, we can go through here and we just crease all those things up. Uh, and then we can go through here and again, crease level three, smooth sub to a four to get the desired result that we want. But it looks like we lost some creasing in here. So we can just go back through here and we can crease these back. So when we did our insert, um, and you can actually, let's do this. 
make it a little bit easier for yourself and then uh, get that so when we put in this um, that poly group poly loop here uh, looks like we lost some of our creasing that's okay we can get it back real quick um, but you know so box modeling would be part of that if you want to make these kind of shapes um, another part of it would be uh, maybe brush inserts, maybe your booleans here. So it's like if I want to put in some detail, this can be my game res here or close to it. We can just modify this a little bit. But any detail you just want to bake into the normal map, I would suggest maybe uh, just putting into your um, your live boolean high res mesh. So again, brush insert. We can grab something out of here that might be interesting. We'll put this on here. You can kind of just drag that out and we'll go ahead and say split mass points and we'll go ahead and drop this below with this bent arrow and then we'll make this subtractive. So we're out of solo mode. We can turn on live boolean and then you can just, you know, duplicate this geometry around and do whatever you need to for your detailing on this type of mesh. And if we don't need this sketch anymore, we can just take this and we can delete it. Or if we want to keep it around, we can turn that eyeball off. And if we don't need these sketches up here anymore because we've matched it, we can do... Um, Control N, clear our canvas, and it looks like we've got to go through here. Let's Alt tap this one, and we'll say crease. Let's do crease edge loop partial. We'll just go through here and just crease uh, that back. And the good thing about this is, number one, all that detail, we can just turn it off, and then we can go back here to our base shape, and then we can say, <clears throat> go through here, and we can make any minor adjustments we need to do, you know, whatever you want to do to make that uh, workable for you. I set up render settings for a good hair card textures using fiber mesh. Render settings, um, <coughs> excuse me. It should be, actually, let me get a thing here. Um, I mean, as long as you're rendering the hair, the fiber mesh cards to a card and has transparency turned on, when you go to BPR render it, it should render fine. Uh, you maybe want your S-Picks turned up so you get nice aliasing. Also around your cards. Um, I'm not sure if I follow perfectly. Like, um, you know, if we go through here and we put on some fiber mesh. And if you don't want your fiber mesh to go all the way through your mesh and do double-sided, just make sure on your display properties you have double turned off. So we do fiber mesh. We preview this. Let's go to our modifiers here. We're going to crank our max fibers down, crank up our coverage and our length. And then, um, so you can make cards out of these. Um, and you can put alpha textures through them. So if we go down here, um, profile of one, and we can put in a star texture. And that'll just go root to tip. And then you can see there's alpha in there. Uh, but it is going to still render that. So let's go to BPR settings and we'll do uh, subdivision and four sides down to just two. Yeah, and that'll give us our hair cards. Of course, this is just a preview. Um, let's go into our coverage and let's go into our width profile and let's crank these up so we get a little bit wider. There we go. We'll say um, accept. And then here you can go through here, you can do like brush groom, whatever hair toss. You can go through here and you can groom your cards however you'd like. Um, but this is essentially your hair cards. Um, but yeah, as long as you have transparency, let's go ahead and turn that off. So you put your hair card texture in here. Uh, another thing you may need to watch out for is, there should be, yeah, anti-alias, maybe turn that anti-alias texture on. Um, but everything should render fine, at least in ZBrush. Uh, external rendering, kind of the same deal. Uh, translucent stockings. Oh boy. Um, there's some good tutorials online about how to render translucency or transparency in ZBrush. Um, honestly, that's what I would end up using like Keyshot for or just the next like Marmoset or something just to do alpha translucency for my final render. Um, if you wanted to do like fish nets, or paint it on or transfer a fishnet to a mass that you can paint on. Um, on my YouTube channel here. If you go back here, we could do like search my channel for fishnet. Um, fishnet micro mesh, fishnet nano mesh, uh, and micro mesh. 
So there's some fishnet stuff in here. And also, yeah, ZBrush fishnets in here. You can also just do that in your texture with the material here. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Uh, is there a way to quad draw in ZBrush to refine the armor pieces? Yeah, we do. So went over that. Um, and nano meshes are a way to make the original object. Oh, and if you wanted to quad draw with like, you know, if you are box modeling it, um, you could just do a thin. So there's our skin Z sphere here. You could do something like this, where you do Q mesh polygon ball, and you can just pull out that thin heat thing here, and then you can go through here and you can say hold down Alt, and you can just Q mesh these things here to kind of have quad draw functionality, or essentially we'd like take this part here and pull this out. Actually, you can also do extrude if you don't want things to snap. So we'll say extrude polygon ball. Go ahead and pull this down, and then we can go through here. We can pull this out. I can go through here. We can say like mask, like your ball here, and then hit W, and push this down or whatever you want to do. So you can kind of use that. To, it's not going to snap to the underlying geometry, but if you did want to, we can say um, hold down Shift and inherit these. Here, so we all have one, and you can grab all these, and you can go to delete hidden. Let's go ahead and do it in auto groups and grab this top one here. And then if you did have geometry underneath the snap to, all it is is just this projectile, subtool projectile, and that'll snap this to the underlying mesh. So essentially, trying to, here's our original sketch here. So you could, um, oh yeah, and Quadra 2 would be BTO, topology brush. So in this way, this might have been actually better. You can go through here. You can be like, let's make some geometry here, and let's make some geometry here, and let's go around this curve here, and let's go across, and say, like, I want geometry here, 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 and here. Uh, and if we want to have thickness to this thing, you can make your brush size thicker, and it'll add thickness, or you can drop your draw size down to one, tap off, go ahead and do split mass points, and now you have geometry through here. Um, if this was off a little bit, or whatever, you can go through here and say project all, and it'll just project those back. So you can go through here and you can like move these things around or um, you know smooth these things out a little bit here, and then you can just do another project all, and that'll just project it to the uh, to the geometry there. Um, yeah, so that's another way you can do that. Uh, it seems like your ZBrush boot up time is pretty fast. Did you do something to make that happen? Um, no. Um, and I don't know. Let's see. Uh, beep, boop, boop. What am I looking for here? This PC. Um, so my system specs here. Uh, it's got 128 gig of RAM. It's the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX, the 32 core processor. Um, I don't know if that helps it start up any faster, but and it's also on a SSD. Best tip for finishing the character's skin detail. Um, you can do that uh, with surface noise. You can do that with just like spraying. Um, if you go through here and divide this up. And we can go through here and say, let's go to us. Oops, let's go to our standard brush and we'll do a spray stroke grab this thing and you just drop that intensity down and go through here and be like, oh, here's all my poor detail or here's all my wrinkle detail or I'm um, going through here with your Damien standard brush and being like, here's my, you know, primary and secondary forms. Uh, let's go ahead and change this lazy radius off here and go through here and you can do your primary and secondary form build up for your wrinkles you want to and then you can go through here and you just detail it up and then you can bake that off or you can do it in the texture externally from ZBrush you can do your primary and secondary forms in ZBrush and then just do all your micro detail um, if you wanted to run an engine you know I don't necessarily know that I would bake all this out I would just do a tiling micro normal to do that what older methods were you using a lot for your workloads have been replaced by the newer tools? I wonder if it gets frustrating sometimes they're doing something a certain way for so long. Uh, yeah, that's always part of the thing to transition for something new is your muscle memory is already built up. So it's like, oh, I don't want to use this new stuff because uh, I'm trying to get this stuff done. I'm in production. Um, or even like setting up a new hotkey, a lot of people won't do uh, just because it's like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna mess up the hotkey a couple times. But really, if you just give it 
yeah, half a day at most, about 15 minutes probably, you know, you'd be surprised. And sometimes even having like your notes up, you know, have a Google Doc up of your hotkeys and stuff so that you can just have that available to you. And then eventually, you know, over the course of a couple of days, it'll just be second nature. But yeah, breaking out of that's kind of tough sometimes. Um, does light boolean when turned on slow down performance in ZBrush, for uh, example, dynamic? It certainly can, because uh, it is, it's a preview render. Uh, let's go back, through, let's turn this off here, so we have these two on, and we got, uh, so we turned on dynamic for this one. Let's go ahead and say smooth subdiv of 5, just to get this really smooth. And if you want to do, make these um, bevel a little bit bigger, you, or softer, I should say, uh, you can drop that crease level down. You can also do something called Q grid. It's not going to work great on a curved surface, uh, but for a flat, like a boxy surface, Q grid is an excellent option. Uh, now on this one here, since I inserted these, these did inherit my smooth subdiv properties. So again, these are very, very smooth. So we can do crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, and that'll give us a nice fall off. And again, this is all live. So as I'm doing this, if I do shift D, that'll turn off my dynamic, D turns it back on. And again, if this smooth level um, is up to five, I'm trying to move these things around, you're going to notice it's kind of chugging a little bit. Um, that's because it is a fairly high resolution. We are doing a live preview render. So it, it's faster than actually doing a Boolean operation. It's just a preview. So, you know, again, we have uh, right now, this is almost 2 million polygons here. And this is technically 118, but it's smooth subdivided up much higher than that. So all of this preview stuff going on, we actually did a preview smooth subdiv up to six. So if I was to apply this, it's giving you a preview. Let's turn off double here, let's apply. It's giving you a preview of 480,000 polygons being booleaned by 2 million polygons for that final result. And it, you know, it's like, yeah, it is a little bit slower, but at least it's doable. Um, not a whole lot of other programs would be able to do this. Of course, you can make better decisions and go in here and say, you know what, I only need to smooth subdiv this of two. Let's do a crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two. And that'll give me like that fall off that I need. And then we can, you see how much more reactive they are. And then even this one, if it's just a preview, you're just trying to get an idea. Um, let's undo that. So we have dynamic, we can say smooth subdiv of four. And if you're just evaluating it from here, this is fine. And then when you bake off, you can go higher, but this will make your uh, mesh a lot more reactive, a lot easier. And we can just go ahead and take this and delete that. I'm going to hide this back again. Cool. Um, game mesh chain mail, you would use nano mesh probably, um, but if it's game mesh and you want to bake it, I would just do it in the texture with alpha and stuff. I, there's no reason to do it in 3D and then bake it off. You can use ZBrush to do that. You can use uh, the Z plugin here, this nano mesh, nano tile textures here is a good one here. So if you go, uh, you can just Google that, but um, go into nano tile here and then you can just make a chain mail that repeats. Um, so another question, any tips I uh, have inspiration for free sculpting or should I just start using reference? Uh, no, sometimes, I mean, just go and getting in here and getting loose and just kind of doing a little sketch here. So we'll grab a Z sphere, make polymesh 3D. I like the, let's turn on X symmetry because uh, I'm a sucker for less work. So if I want to do something symmetrical, I'll just start there. I'll scale that down just a little bit. And then we'll just go ahead and dynamesh this here. And then just going through here and let's try to just find a shape of what we want to make. And uh, my default's always like, oh, let's make a face. So it's a, my, that's always going to be my first, you know, put a little cranium in here. And then we'll go ahead and spread this out a little bit. Um, trim dynamic, and then we can go through here and just start making a face here. Uh, but be, let's go ahead and I'm going to go to brush all the way to the bottom, reset current brush or reset all brushes. And then I'll go ahead and get us in a little bit, a bit of a better, make sure lazy radius is up and then turned off. And then just going through here and then just trying to, um, make something interesting. Uh, while you're doing this, always remember you do have, um, if you go into standard brush here, you do have Sculptures Pro, and we can also go down here to like our snake hook, and we can go through here, and then you can just add uh, geometry on the fly. So if you wanted to do anything crazy, you know, and you didn't want to have to um, constantly, like in order for me to do this, and we can go in here to inflate, and um, or we can hold down shift to smooth and then let go 
of shift and we can inflate this up a little bit here, do a little uh, Shrek. Um, so with Sculptors Pro turned on, uh, this allows you to, <laughs> depending on your brush size, you can make your brush size smaller and that'll automatically tessellate this on the fly. So that way you don't have to worry about if we have this off and I wanted to pull out an antenna and I wanted to use snake hook, it would work for a minute, uh, but then it would start doing that kind of stuff. So you'd have to be like, okay, let's pull this out and then redynamesh. And let's pull this out and let's redynamesh. Let's pull this out and let's redynamesh. Uh, instead of doing that, you can just have Sculptures Pro turned on. And then when you go through here, it'll just pull out and automatically tessellate as you go. And then like I said before, you can hold down shift to smooth and then let go of shift and that'll go ahead and start inflating. Or you can use the inflate brush, that's also fine. So, I'm gonna turn that on. Um, and you're gonna notice again, if I dynamesh this, it's gonna make it all one resolution. So if you want adaptive resolution, you can have Sculptures Pro turn on. If you want all one resolution, you can just drop that back to dynamesh here. And then we can go through here. And then we can start, you know, dialing in our little weird creaturey guy. Go in here with our trim brush here. And we can go ahead and say clay buildup is sometimes a good one. Um, I would, if you want to do a little softer, you can change that alpha out, and that'll just be kind of like a little bit better of a clay buildup for you. It might be a little bit um, easier to stomach, or you can go into your clay brush here, and you can throw an alpha in here, and you can crank that intensity up, and that might feel a little bit better. But always, you know, working in the round, going through here, and then upping the resolution as needed as you continue to refine your object here. You and go through here, and we can start dialing it. And again, we changed it over to... Um, Dynamesh here, and uh, if you need to smooth more, um, you can go into your brushes here, and you, you, like I'm just going through here and I'm smoothing and it's not really being reactive enough for the resolution I'm working on. Number one, you should probably not be working in that resolution um, until you've gone through and uh, gotten your primary forms, but if you don't want to deal with that and you just want to move ahead, um, I like to use in here there's a smooth and there's a Smooth Stronger in here. I have it auto-loaded. So when I hold down Shift, I can just go to Smooth Stronger. Really what that is, if you hold down Shift and go down here to our bah, 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 Smooth Brush Modifiers, you can change that Weighted Smooth Mode to 1, and that changes it to Stronger. And then you can go through here, and then uh, you can have a little bit of an easier time. Let's go ahead and turn off Lazy Mouse here. So again, uh, Damien Standard is a good way to kind of get your uh, forms built in, and then Clay or Clay Build Up to kind of build up your forms and always you know move brush as well and kind of get these things dialed in or your standard brush here kind of dial the stuff in like so and if you want to do lips we can um, for standard brush you can pull these out you can also use your Damien's whoops um, if you accidentally hit D and then you're trying to sculpt and it's like oh my gosh why is it so choppy that's because you hit D which is turning on dynamic subdivision so you want to make sure that's turned off you can do shift D and then It'll be much more responsive. Again, it's giving you a preview for like a 2 million polygon mesh while you're trying to sculpt, so it's not going to be very reactive here. Uh, but you can hold down Alt, and you can use that to kind of pull up your lip shapes here, and then you can go through here and you can use your clay brush or whatever. And, um, you know, you could retopologize this or whatever you want to do. Um, and for Damien Standard, I suppose that'll work fine. You can also remember you can use your masking uh, and inflate. So if you did want to go through here and like mask this and then you wanted to like really push these things up. Now you, if you dynamesh this again it is just going to dynamesh all that together. However if you turn dynamesh off and you use Sculptures Pro for this kind of type of stuff you can go through here and you can keep these things separate. But that's kind of up to you. Um, so we can say let's go ahead and mask this. go through here and again you're just going through and you're making modifications and we can go through here you can use the pinch brush too we can kind of pinch this down or you can inflate it up if you want to pop this down and if you want to put some eyes in here you know you can kind of carve out a little socket for your eyeballs to go and you can you know make sure you do have some areas for eye bags in here but if you need to have a little bit more um, indication of where eyeballs are going to go. You can go um, B, 
FBI brush insert your primitives here. Let's go ahead and grab a sphere. Drop these in. And uh, you don't have to keep them separate. You can, let's turn LSIM on. And then we can go uh, split mass points. And then if you wanted to put some, and it, you know, the reason I had LSIM turned on is when I'm scaling them, they're going to scale across our local axis instead of, you know, towards the middle and out. Just turn this little LSIM button on here. And you know what? I kind of like that kind of um, wall-eyed look in here. So if we want to, we can also go in here, you can duplicate this off. And if I want to pull along that surface normal here, we can say QMesh polygon ball, and we can just pull that out. And then I can duplicate this a couple times. We can hold that control shift. First of all, let's just do it from one side. So I'm gonna hit X to go across that symmetry. And we're gonna get, get rid of this one on this side here. Control shift, we're gonna go into a trim curve like we were using earlier. And we'll go ahead and do an upper eyelid on this side. And then with this duplicate here, again, X symmetry turned off. Let's go ahead and delete that one. And you're gonna notice, you know, I had um, trim selected. However, you do hold, hold down control shift and then tap control to do visibility temporarily. And you can delete that and then you're just right back into trim. So go do this one here. So now we have upper and lower eyelids here. So you can just very quickly go through and just alt tap this one here. And let's go ahead and say, Here's this eyelid and that eyelid. And now I can just do a quick, I'll turn LSIM off. So we can do a mirror, mirror and weld here. And then this one, mirror, mirror and weld. And then we'll just take this one here. We'll put it above. And then we'll merge it down. And then we'll Dynamesh it together. Let's turn Dynamesh back on. There you go. And now we can start you know, refining this uh, a little bit easier, maybe. <laughs> Always love a good Arnold quote. Um, complex hard surface plane changes like something uh, Furio Tedeschi would do. Um, sure, anything in particular? Like just all that is is really just adding edges. Um, if you wanted to do a variable radius change, you could do like make polymesh 3D. Go down here, uh, initialize this as a Q cube. And it, all, all it really is, let's go ahead and just say delete polygroup ball here. And all it really is is like controlling your edge loops here. So if we do a bevel edge loop complete, and let's hit control W. So if we wanted to say, let's say um, slide edge loop complete, so we're gonna slide this here and slide this here, and then we're gonna slide this edge further apart here. Um, trying to think of Uh, let's go ahead and say smooth subdiv of three. You can go from a broader to a more tight edge in here, if that's what you're talking about. Oh, hey, how are we doing time? Okay, good. Um, organic skin mutant armor creation thing. Um, Oh, uh, yeah, so we were working on that a little bit before. I haven't done anything with it, but if you go back through the Pavlovich workshop here, uh, I think the last one he did was this creature here. So if I go to, not recording, uh, streaming, let's see the last modified we did. That's kind of where we ended up. I took uh, Bertram's, um, Thing here and we were to kind of doing just a little bit of a kind of a we talked a little bit about nano mesh and you know doing a little bit of an um, organic hard surface breakdown and where this kind of came into play and this is an example of that um, Pavlovich here they load this up something like this fan art here this resin a little bit. So kind of just doing an organic-y, hard surface, Kenneth Scott style uh, armor breakup. And again, this is just a kind of a Z sketch. Uh, you know, just, you can see that it's just lazy mouse and kind of doing that. But if you really wanted to make this shine, um, it would just be a matter of, and this could be maybe a panel thing. So if we're going through here and we're saying, hey, let me, uh, 
me, I'm just deciding where I want my panels to go. Let's say this is on. Um, Damien standard just feels a little bit weird. Hold on, Alt. And again, you're just going through here and refining where you want the panel. But the good news is um, you can just go through here really quickly. If you want to just make a quick panel, uh, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. But one way you can do it, you can just grab the, dev the shape that you want here. It's like I want it to go over the arm. And this is my arm sketch, so there may be an arm in there, there may not. But if I want to just go ahead and pop this panel off, <clears throat> that reminds me. Let's go to here to preferences, quick save, duration, duration. Um, so that's the overall shape that I want. And if you want to, you want to keep your sketch around, we can just duplicate this off. Um, we can hit control W and that'll give us our poly group here. Or you can try going in here to geometry, edge loop, edge loop mass border. And that might give us a little bit of a cleaner slice through here. And then we can just do delete hidden. Zero mesh half death size down to zero. I'm just going to get this basic shape. Let Zero Mesher do the heavy lifting for me. Now I may need to help Zero Mesher out. And again, going into my Move Accu brush, we can pull this out to a corner here, and here, and here. Just kind of telling it, hey, I want these to be sharp corners, please. And then when I Zero Mesh half, there we go. We've got nice sharp corners here. And you know, go down as low as you possibly can just to get your overall shape. And then you can go through here. You can do a panel loops uh, here, but I'd like to just go through here and uh, we can pull this out. Uh, if you wanted to, you can also do an inset or you can maybe do a Q mesh polygroup ball for these shapes here. And then Q mesh polygroup island and hold down shift. And I'll kind of give you that kind of shape here. So you can go through here and we can say crease polygroup, drop or crease tolerance down, maybe hit D and then that'll be a shape you can do. Let's say crease level of three, smooth set of a four. And now we have kind of an armor shape here you can kind of play with. And then do that a million times. Now that's for like, if you actually wanted this to be a separate piece of armor, you don't have to do that. That, that uh, sketch fab thing I showed you on my channel, my sketch fab thing, that wasn't separated. That was just sculpted in. So I literally went through here and was like, you know, clay brush this up and then go through and H polish it down and then hold down shift to smooth and go through here and just kind of, I'm just designing all those complex little loop de loos just by sculpting. That's not something I would necessarily do now. It's just kind of a pain to work as. I would rather have these things as separate pieces so I can go through here and make it really nice. And you can see it's fairly easy to do. It's not rocket science or anything. And if I want to make this shape in here, sometimes it's easier just to go through here and say, Instead of a cylinder, I might want to start with like a sphere because I can kind of go through here and I can kind of squish this down a little bit and we can scale this out a little bit here. We can go ahead and say, let's go ahead and split mass points. So we have our, and again, let's turn on L sim. Now we're not doing this in uh, symmetry, but so we got, this is the overall tapered shape I want, but you know, like we were mentioning earlier, this is the real shape I want. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to slice this, uh, but you can, and you know what, if I want the real shape here, the real shape. So this is the shape that I want. Well, we can go ahead and just delete that. And again, just use Z remesh or half depth size down to zero. And we can get just a nicer version of that shape. Uh, and you can cap this off if you want to, or if it's just going to be a shell that's sitting over that Q mesh polygrip island or whatever. And like I mentioned before, um, you can pull this out. We can also try maybe sliding edge loop partial. We can slide this back a little bit here. Uh, that just uh, pulled through there. Um, what could we do? We could bevel this back, I suppose. Or we can do an insert, single edge loop here, and then we can do, uh, we can delete this or we can collapse this back. So kind of depending on the shape you want to make, you can do that. But we'll go ahead and say crease polygroup, crease, smooth set of the two, or sorry, smooth set division of three, crease level of two. And then now we've got that nice shape in here. And you, go, you can scale this down if you want to and make it fit a little bit better. Uh, but now, you know, you've got that already built. And then as you're doing that, you can go through and you can start deleting some of this stuff or getting it out of the way. And then like we were even talking about like this little cylinder that we put in here, we can isolate this, the cylinder. Let's go ahead and do an auto groups. So I want to pop this piece out, split hidden. We can put this in here. Let's go ahead and unmesh mesh center. And if I want to reset this thing just to that cylinder, we can just alt tap it and go to mesh center. And now we have 
that access available to us. So we can just very quickly go through and scale this up and put this in. So this cylinder is going to kind of ride underneath that little um, housing shell right through here. Uh, if you want to get fancy with a cylinder, you can replace a cylinder with any sort of kit bash stuff you want to have. Or we can do like, um, let's go through here and we'll do a group by normals and then we'll say inset polygroup all. We'll inset this one, we'll inset this one. And you know what, let's make these all the same polygroup so we can just do this as we're going. So we can say like Q mesh polygroup all. We can just hold down shift and pull these out or we can um, maybe pull these out. And now that those are both the same, we can inset both sides at once. We can inset them again and we can say Q mesh polygroup all. And let's hold down shift and pull these in. BI brush insert uh, model kit here. Hit M. Or you can just go through here and you can sort through them. I like to look at them all through here so I can go, oh, which one do I want? Let's do mm, this one. Let me go through here and plop that in there. And even this one you can split out if you want to. And uh, we can get rid of the sketch here, turn that off. So here we can uh, go to unmesh mesh center. We can just scale this up. Or if you don't want it to be unmatched mesh under, you want it to be from this point here. Just alt tap it. You can scale this up or down. Now this one you can hit D for our dynamic. You know, but you know, don't subdivide them too much. This one we can do crease PG, crease level of three, smooth subdivide of four. And then now we've got we're starting to build our organic armor there. Uh, what is the game asset topology standard? Uh, that depends on the type of game you're making, if it needs to deform or not. Um, <clears throat> if it's a face that has some very special rules. Uh, you can mark a subtool for subtraction boolean simply with a subtract icon. What's the difference or a situation where you have to polygroup it as a negative? Um, like here is the subtractive and then here is the intersection. Um, polygroup it as a negative. I'm not sure I follow on that one. Uh, basically it would be, this would be subtracting one object out of another one and then this one would be an intersection of them. Um, and then this, this little first one would just be uh, booleaning on them together. I uh, always end up using too high density for Dynamesh, which is secondary forms. Any advice when to stop using Dynamesh? Um, well, for example, we've got this guy's head here, and we were kind of just going through here, and this was starting to get to be a very high Dynamesh. So at this point, um, if I have this mesh here, and I'm like, you know what? I'm getting a little noodly with the details here. So I, and I like to also make changes to my primary and secondary forms maybe a little bit. If I try to do it now, since it is so high resolution, it's gonna, it might be a little bit tougher, but what we can do is we can uh, duplicate this off. And if we want to control this a little bit more, you can see we have polygroups in here, but we can go through here <coughs> and we can uh, put polygroups in here for a Z remesh. So if we wanted to say, or we can actually just go through here and we can say mask this off and we can just cap these later because sometimes it's a little bit easier for zero mesher to be like, hey, you know what? Uh, you're going to zero mesh this, but I don't really need eyelid information. I can do without that. So you can go through here, mask that. You can control alt tap to harden it up a little bit here. If you're having a hard time, you also go in here to render properties and you can turn off shadows here. That might make it a little easier to see, or you can choose a different uh, shader, skin shader. Four is a good one for that, maybe. We can go through here and we can say, okay, we don't need any of this stuff. Uh, so we can hit control W and then we can isolate that, invert it, and then we can go delete hidden. If you have any stragglers hanging out there, you can hold down control shift and you can grab a little piece, control shift A, and then delete hidden just to get rid of it. Um, so that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is just by adding polygroups through here. So through here, if you do want your Zero Mesher to follow these polygroups, you can just turn on the polygroup option. Um, you can also use Z cur Zero Mesher curves, but I have found that I like having the visual representation of just having this stuff available. So we can say, okay, here's this and here's this, and we can hit um, Control W, and that'll give us a polygroup here. You can also do like what we did earlier. Let's make sure that's all one piece, yeah. Um, and then through here, I might just go through here and we can just slice 
this bottom piece out just to get one polygroup back there. Like so. So now that we have that set up, and again, feel free to like make polygroups for any of this stuff. Uh, but then if I want to zero mesh this, we'll have X symmetry turned on. We're gonna say uh, keep groups turned on, target polygon kind of five is fine, adapt to size. I'm gonna turn that down just a bit. Um, the more, lower you turn that down, the more uniform your polygons are going to be, so they're going to be nice and square. Ooh, you know what? I don't shouldn't have that up. That's a little scary. Um, <clears throat> so let that go for a minute. And then we can just continue zero meshing this down and then projecting back. So essentially, where what the question was, was how do you know when to stop dynameshing your resolution and going into detailing mode. So once you're done, like if you're not going to pull out these horns anymore or make any huge changes, you're just going to make relatively minor changes. Um, here's my result. I think this is perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I don't, let's say, you know what, that's, that's fine to keep. I'm just going to cap these later. Um, but before I, well, I guess I can do it now or I can, I can do it later with freeze transforms. Let's see if we can do it later. So I've got, Hold down uh, shift and turn everything else off so we just have these two showing. And then I'm going to go into uh, project all, or I can just go into my custom menu. We're going to project all. We're going to hit control D to add a subdivision and then project all. And control D, project all. Control D, project all. And as I'm doing this, you don't even need um, it. You can actually turn solo on and it'll still work as long as that visibility is turned on. So if we switch between, this is my remeshed one and then this is my original one, you're going to see no difference at all. So this original one, we don't even need that anymore. We can keep it around if we want to for, for old time's sake. Uh, but now we have our new zero mesh one. Now I don't like having open meshes. I do like to have these um, closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say free subdivision levels. And I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say um, close convex hole. We have X turned on, so we can go ahead and close this hole here. Isolate this, hit control W. And then we're going to go through here and we're going to say inset polygroup all region. I'm going to pull this in here. And then I'm going to say, let's do another inset. And then I'm going to say mask, boy, or mask polygroup all. Invert that. And I'm just going to push these straight back here. And it looks like on that side, it was doing something weird. Huh. I'm afraid to because what I'm going to, uh, should be okay. That's usually like a weld problem. Let's see if I can do this. Weld points. Okay, that fixed it. <laughs> uh, that's gender geometry weld points here. Let's try that again. Uh, mask, polygroup ball, and I'm a little weary of doing too many changes. Let's go ahead and reset this so we can push this back here. So now that I have that, if I go out of free subdivision levels, it'll go through and be like, okay, nothing really changed except for what was inside those eyeballs. And I was just trying to get some decent width. Uh, I may not do a perfect job, but usually it's easy enough just to go down to like subdivision level two and smooth these out. Subdivision level three, smooth these out. And then subdivision level four. And then we can go through here. Let's isolate this, control shift X to expand. And you can just go through here and you can just smooth these out. Control shift X. Yeah, I was doing some weird, weird projections here. Let's go ahead and smooth these little points out here that were giving us problems. Again, not ideal. Um, and you could have, you could have capped that first and then just gone through and only masked um, that when you're projecting. I was trying to skip that and kind of didn't work out for me. But anyway, long story short, you can go through here and now you have uh, access to your primary and secondary forms. And if you want to mask this side here, let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry. We'll drop down to subject level two. We're going to mask this side here. And we're going to go down here to deformation, do a smart resim. And then go up a subdivision level. Just to make sure I'm perfectly symmetrical here. Smart resim and then go up. And the reason I'm, you can just go to the highest in Smart Resim, this just makes it work a little bit more accurately and a little bit faster. 
and we're just getting our symmetry back. So when we projected our details back, we have access to detailing, and we're not going to make any major changes that we need Dynamesh for. We can turn X symmetry back on, but we also have access to being able to drop down in our subdivision history and go through. Let's turn this off. We'll turn this down a little bit and go through and make some primary shape changes here. You know, so you can kind of go through and have access to that, and then you can go all the way back up. And then as you're going through and you're detailing, you know, these are still these still aren't like surface detail. These aren't like pore details or anything like that. These are still you know, your primary wrinkle forms, like where the mouth kind of gathers in the corner. They're going to wrinkle very specifically, and your eye bags are going to wrinkle in a very specific manner. Let's make sure, let's turn that lazy radius down on our Damien standard brush there. So you can go through here, and you can, again, make these wrinkle in a very specific way. Go through here, and again, you can also go back in with your clay brush if you really want to kind of inflate these up, or you can even go in with your inflate brush or any of that good stuff. And you can mask by cavity and inflate through those. Um, but that'll kind of give you the best of both worlds, so you don't need to worry about, you know, once you're done making your big changes, um, your resolution, you can just dial in here as opposed to just constantly refine, you know, upping your resolution in your Dynamesh. <clears throat> Any feedback from Pixelogic on your suggestions from the summit? Oh, um, <laughs> I haven't heard. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Um, Sculpture's Pro Mode with the snake hook. What parameter determines how quickly the shape is being pulled out? Begins to diminish in size. It starts larger. You pull it, it becomes smaller. Um, you know, the rate of what that happens, I'm not sure. Because the snake hook and snake hook 2, that parameter is under your modifiers. So if we go through here and we do snake hook and we're pulling out, it is, does get small. Oops, turn on Sculptus Pro. So we're pulling it out and it's getting smaller. Uh, however, if we do snake sphere, it stays pretty constant. Uh, so there's got to be something in there that's telling it. And snake of cactus this is just snake sphere. So I know the one that's like, hey, use the surface normal or use my camera angle, uh, if I remember. <laughs> and again, just in case. And sometimes I'll have to do this for myself. Is I'll be like, hey, Mike, you do know how to do this. You did the video on it, but uh, here's move and snake hook. Here's uh, new snake hook functionality. So I can click on this video. I can be like, hey, wait, what are those options again? Going through here and being like, wait, Sculptures Pro. It's under the modifiers here. Uh, brush modifier, that's right. So the brush modifier. So if, uh, the brush modifier is set to 100. So it's going straight up from the surface normal. If we do this brush modifier of zero, um, is this what it is? Here. It's like camera based versus normal based is the difference between those. But um, if we, so if you want to change, so we're going to go between snake hook and then snake sphere. So it looks like constant tilt is on. If we turn that off, no, it still gets smaller. Um, Snake sphere, brush multiplier. This is just the normal angle. Uh, also, maybe samples. So let's say snake hook. Fast samples is turned on. Samples radius is turned down to zero. Let's turn that samples radius down. No. Brush modifier is at 100. You know what? I'll just, just for the hell of it, just to make sure they're, they're the same. Dot stroke, snake hook, spotlight projection, uh, no. Brush modifier, all those settings are the same. Hmm, hmm. Depth, embed 100, I don't know, that shouldn't make any difference, but. So I'm slowly getting it to kind of try and work more like the snake sphere to see if I can find out where the where that's coming into play here. Surface, modifiers, tablet pressure, snake hook, use global settings. This one doesn't have global settings. I mean, you can press down harder. 
but yeah, it does taper off. Um, I don't know. I'll have to mess around with that. Maybe stroke? Things here. Curve it wouldn't be in here. Lazy mouse, maybe? I don't know. It's probably really exciting watching me. Modifiers? No? Hmm. Hmm. Not sure. Um, any tips on making something like a weapon in ZBrush organic modeling and retopologizing it later for engine use? Uh, I have an, a weapon specific. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in my playlist here, I do go over the making of the sci-fi pistol series. So going from concept and a bunch of different methods for like, you know, starting with something like this and then ending with something like, and this, this even goes into painter and stuff too. So here's the finest, the finished uh, model in here. We're in uh, painter, just kind of texturing it up and taking it to IRA and stuff like that. So that has a lot of different techniques. If you're just talking about organic-y stuff, if you go to load more, and again, this is really old, embarrassingly old, but if you go into concept sketching here, we I do a, it's an old school, like this is kind of a, just a block out. And again, uh, you, you're kind of, if you, this method, you're kind of relinquishing control at first, just to kind of get your idea out quickly, and then you can go back and then just, you can use whatever program you want. It's, if it's just box modeling, or if you want to go to even Fusion 360 and stuff, uh, you can go through there, but at least you have your sketch built out. And speaking of, yeah, if you do want to use your ZBrush sketch as an underlying 3D, like a volumetric sketch, uh, like Fusion 360 here, uh, we take our ZBrush model into Fusion 360, and then we just use that as our 3D sketch here. You see this little weird little piece here that we made. This little weird piece we made in ZBrush, you can just bring it in and then you have a 3D representation of the shape you want to make and you can use whatever program you want to box model that as needed. Um, when your standard brush is becoming very dot instead of smooth stroke. Um, yeah, that one would be like, let me see, make polymesh 3D and divide this up. So this is um, nice. And then uh, sometimes on your stroke menu here, we have lazy mouse. If it's off, this can sometimes be a little bit, you can see it's kind of getting a little dotty. You can turn your lazy mouse on and that'll get rid of that. Um, you can also change your lazy uh, step down and that'll put those things together give you an even nicer stroke. It's a little bit harder on your performance, but you can turn your lazy radius down if you don't want that much. So that'll kind of run your dots together. Uh, Bertram says, how do you, how, how do you turn this face into an organic skin modified armor? Uh, if you're talking about this face here, uh, it, it's just, uh, and I, I assume you're talking about this face or if there's a specific face. Um, it would just be concepting it. So like if we go back to our um, Dynamesh here, I'd say, okay, duplicate this off. And then I'm gonna drop this resolution down. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's already pretty high resolution here. <clears throat> there we go. So it'd be like, okay, what kind of armor do I wanna put on him? So I'm gonna go through here and be like, I want armor here all the way through here and then go through here with my clay brush and just start, you know, developing an armor set for him to kind of wear and use and masking and so really it's just just really the hard part is the idea. The hard part is like what how do I want to make this cool? The easy part is going, okay, now that I have my 3D concept sketch, you just look at the problem. Goodness gracious. You just look at the problem and then you decide how you want to kind of tackle it. And that just could, you know, lowest common denominator is just, okay, I'm just going to manually rebuild it. I have all the information in place. <clears throat> I can just go through and use my topology brush or my, um, or my, um, you know, whatever brush, my uh, Z-Sphere retopology brush and all that good stuff. So, you know, this, 
this type of stuff is like, well, where do, what do I, what am I making? That's that's a little bit more of the harder part. And always remember, you can always go back in here, and you can. If you're dropping these things in, and you notice it's kind of uh, skewed as you drop them in, tap Control, um, and that might get them back to normal. And then we can go in here. We can like split mass points, and then we can say dynamic, uh, crease it, crease level of three, so instead of a four. And you want to put this piece in here. But if we want to cut this piece out of this one, you know, you can use a light boolean first if you want to. You can say, let's duplicate this off. We'll make this subtractive, and then we'll turn on light boolean, and then we can make this. Like okay, I want it to be like a little slot that this thing can go in. Uh, but if you just you're just concepting, you want to dynamesh this. Uh, all you got to do is be like, okay, that's fine. So I'm going to take this one here. Let's turn light boolean off. We can merge this down, and then we can just cut that out, and then that'll just give us our preview. Um, yeah, and then you're just going through here and just getting your idea out. Again, the idea is the hard part. The easy part is rebuilding it later. Uh, human body, which you usually <clears throat> do that once you're done with the anatomy and the muscle work. When you're ready to work on the detail passages, fat deposits, veins, etc., they don't change the form that much. They just add to the detail and final look at the mesh. Yeah, once you're done, uh, and really for the human body, um, so the detail pass, I wouldn't put fat deposits as a detail pass thing. It's really surface anatomy. So um, your major forms is what I would, once you're done working on your major primary and possibly your secondary forms, then you can zero mesh project your detail back. And then any of your tertiary forms, your wrinkles, or once you're getting down to that level of minutia of your detail, that's when I would switch over to Dynamesh, or going from Dynamesh to like a zero mesh project. Um, how are your sales doing? Your new training pack. You know what? I haven't even looked. That was really <laughs> uh, the sales was kind of secondary or tier. That wasn't even a really a major concern of mine. The bigger thing was like, as I start doing more project specific things, I can know it because everybody always asks me, you know, or I want to give them available uh, the availability of just going through and doing uh, like the basics. Like here's the basic functionality of all these things in ZBrush, and then we can go and do like let's make a car, let's make a creature, let's make a a weapon, and then I'm like, okay, here's how I would make this and all the techniques I would use. But if you want to learn the basics of a lot of different things, and then I, they at least have something available to them. Uh, I want to work in Treyarch, Call of Duty stuff. How can I create my showreels character artist? Give you some info. Yeah, you can go to my art station page. And underneath my profile here, there's a blog section. And in here, do I need a college degree? Motivation, inspiration, 2D and 3D, 2D versus 3D concept art and production pipelines. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? How to break in the games industry. I'll give you that one. And this is kind of like, this is not necessarily breaking in, but also tailoring your portfolio and stuff. So that may be worthwhile to you, maybe not. Um, let me see. Uh, and the Wasp by Marcos, uh, and it's just this thing right here. Um, and I'm just guessing it looks, it looks like just, you know, any, any, anything you want to make, um, and here's, here's a breakdown of what he did. Anything you want to make starts with the basic shape. So any, any complex, you know, let's do this. Get the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life. Something like this. And you look at this problem and you go, oh my god, how do I model this? It's impossible. It's insanity. It's really not. All it is is like you start out with your basic shapes. You get the big primary form reads first. And then you go through and you do your secondary reads. And then you do your tertiary reads. And you do your detail pass. And you, do, you just start breaking down a mess of a problem. 
into manageable sections. So like this thing here would just be, you'd be these big primary reads and then you would nano mesh or you would uh, array mesh those back. Um, maybe do these big primary reads here, just extruded cylinders, or you can use these spheres for this. Um, this would just be an array mesh and a nano mesh. And then after you get these big reads in there, that's like, okay, then you start modeling these little pieces in. You can lie Boolean these little shapes out or you can just box model all this stuff go through and you can put a line down the middle and then you can put in little clasps here. So as you're breaking down your primary reads into your secondary reads, breaking up those secondary reads into smaller, uh, more manageable chunks as you're kind of breaking up the details and then you're adding rivets and bolts and all that stuff by the end, it was none of it is hard to do. It's just making sure that you're problem solving from the big reads, the big problems to the smaller problems. And that's for anything. So like any any crazy thing you see on ArtStation, you're essentially just looking at it as, you know, oh, look at all this detail. Oh, my God. Take a step back or squint your eyes and go, oh, make this read first, that big triangle shape first, and then go through and you can inset that to get that little bevel line in there. And then it's got, oh, he's got little clasps on there. Insert mesh brush and you're done. And then you do that for... 20 straight hours because it's a complex model, but the overall way you make that isn't isn't that uh isn't really a rocket science. Um, what memory do you need to be comfortable in ZBrush? 8, 16, 24, 32. Um, I would say at least eight. There should be min spec. They prefer six plus gigs, strongly recommended. Uh, I have 128, so yeah, or 256. Uh, however much you can afford, that's reasonable. More than six. Oh, and Dr. Depresso, as he says, uh, you can paint your panel cuts and use polygroup with panel loops. That's another good point. Um, in fact, in here, if we go back to my YouTube page here, type in polygroup it, there is a hard surface geo from polygroup it. So you can use this technique to kind of go through and do uh, panel loops and hard surface polygrouping and stuff like that. So I tend to want to have a little bit more control and also always be wary of going through when you're doing hard surface stuff and it's like, oh, I'm going to do panel cuts. So I'm going to duplicate this guy off here and I'm going to say, Let's go nuts. Let's give this guy like some armor, right? And we're gonna go through here and we're gonna say control W isolate this. And we're gonna say delete hidden. And we're gonna go through here and we're gonna slice curve. And on here, we're gonna say B radius or a brush radius. And we're just gonna go through and we're gonna use our brush radius here to kind of dial in some interesting little shapes here and we'll go ahead and delete hidden and then we're going to go through with our slice curve and we'll turn off B radius and we'll say here and oops turn off B radius and then we'll do a quick mirror and weld and it's like okay I've got all these pieces here and now I want to uh, you know we can even zero mesh this so we can say if I want a little bit cleaner geometry because we can panel loops this but it's gonna be kind of nasty so we'll go zero measure half depth size down to zero keep groups on just give us something a little bit more usable. There we go. So now we've got this and then you can go through here and you can do your panel loops. So we're going to go here. Geometry, panel loops with double turned on. We'll go ahead to crank that thickness up a bit. So you can go through here and it's like, oh, I've got some sweet panel loops. And you can isolate these things here and you can do like maybe polish by features, open circle, and you can like really polish these things down. Or you can turn on crease subdivision levels or anything like that. But what I would avoid is just calling it a day at this point and being like, I went through and I sliced up some shapes and I made panel loops out of them. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, always look at reference and stuff, but where things really look interesting is like when we go into brush here, we can go like auto masking, mask by polygroups up to 100, um, you know, shape and level differentiation between different pieces and stuff like this. You know, there's depth and these things are going to overlap and cross over each other and there's going to be reasons for you know these pieces to be not just simply cut into a surface and then sitting next to each other and beveled out and calling it a day um, I don't usually see a whole lot of armor that's just that 
uh, it look, usually looks pretty and even when you back away from it it's just going to read as just like little lines cut in just arbitrary lines cut into your shape so you're always thinking about how is this tied together how did these things work together uh, how is it applied or roped or attached to my object the functionality of it even if it's not working functionality what I would avoid is just leaving out leaving your panel cuts like this um, unless you're going to do something like this is just a shell and then inside of here is going to be some greeble detail and it just, literally is just panels applied but even then you don't want panels just kind of sitting on there you want them to make sense and put in there in a way that you know it's a good starting point just don't stop there um, custom hotkeys posted somewhere uh, if you go to my gumroad uh, let's see and on my QBurst page and my gumroad page and it's not this isn't anything that you need to pay for um, if you scroll all the way to the bottom ish there's an intro to zbrush files if you click on that one you can get, again you can get this for free it's got my custom menu for 2018 and my hotkeys so you can just open the hotkey f um, file which will be under ZBrush data so users public public document ZBrush data um, the startup hotkeys there's a little startup hotkeys here so just for the hell of it here's my hotkeys if you want to just see them um, but if you want to download my custom menu and look at my hotkeys all of that stuff should be in this uh, intro to ZBrush files here or down here intro to ZBrush files here and I think I got it for 2018 Z startup folder yeah I think I've updated this for 2018 I should have hope I did um, you can use panel loops to quickly create things like bandages and cloth wraps uh, yeah so with the bandages and stuff I can show you guys that real quick so you get an arm here so it's like I want to put bandages in here the only it's not ideal I suppose uh, we, like we were doing before we can do slice with a brush radius here you can kind of go through here and depending on your brush radius you can make um, slices through here however um, it, you're you're not really wrapping bandages around here that's a little bit more involved uh, you could actually use marvelous designer and an avatar that spins to wrap a bandage if you wanted to uh, there might be more elegant solutions you can actually use a helix uh, primitive and kind of wrap it in this shape and then go through here and just move it around if you want to truly wrap something um, but if you do want to just quickly kind of go through here and just do like mummy wrappings you can just go through here and then just isolate these and then you've got uh, all these separate pieces here and go to like say delete hidden and then uh, I, I like to I always like to do zero mesh but on these tight corners it may or may not work but uh, through here we can just go through here and do a um, I'm gonna go for your panel loops let's crank that thickness up there you go So, and again, if you want to move these things around, um, you can also turn on topological. You can just use a move topological brush. Uh, but again, um, you can kind of, you can, and you don't have to like cut them so that they're at angles. You can cut them straight across and then go through and move them manually so that they're angled up and overlapping. Um, if that's a little bit easier for you. So, for example, but again, it's not, it's just an indication of, so we can go through a slice curve. And the only reason I would use slice curve with the uh, brush size on is just so you're getting uh, consistent spacing between them. But if you, if it's just a little bit easier, you can turn that off as well. But now we have this and this, delete hidden. And then, uh, ew, that's not gonna be great, but. And, but this one we can zero mesh. So this one is actually be better. So zero step size on zero, half. And then now we have, oops, keep groups turned on. There we go. So this will give you a little bit more easier to work with topology. And then you can do your panel loops like this. And then you can use um, 
actually we need, I'm about to just do an auto groups hit W control click these and then you can go through here and you can make these do whatever you want to do but again it's not really wrapping it's just kind of little spirals that you change cool awesome um, all right I think that's it thanks everybody I'm gonna go ahead and head out um, I think uh, next uh, the first Tuesday and Thursday of the month is usually when I try to stream Tuesday for this channel, Pixelogic, and then Thursday for my channel. Um, hard edge on a portion of my organic model. Spider-Man's eyes are a little bit extrude, has little hard edge trim, and H polish is pink because it's so small and tight. Um, Spider-Man... Oh... Um, that might be a topology brush. If you're talking about the outline of his eyes, I would just topology brush that shape and then extrude it. Um... If you're talking about the webbing, I would use like a fishnet type thing for that. Cool. Alrighty. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, if you find out that uh, snake hook parameter that keeps it all one thing and we can find a way to kind of taper that off over time based on parameters that you decide, uh, it'd be good to know. But uh, yeah, I'm not positive on that. Cool. All right. See you guys uh, next time.